book because for me, fascism isn't just an academic theory. It had a major and direct impact on my life. As an infant in pre-World War II Czechoslovakia, I was forced by the Nazis to flee with my parents to London where we survived the Blitz. And after the war, when we went back to Czechoslovakia, the communists drove my family from our home for a second time. Later, as UN ambassador and secretary of state, I had confrontations with perpetrators of ethnic cleansing in the Balkans, and I was the most senior US official so far to negotiate with a ruler from North Korea. As, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, as chairman of the National Democratic Institute, I'm involved in the struggle between democracy and dictatorship every day. And so this book is a product of personal experience. I've lived it, and I know what the stakes are. And because I didn't enter public service at a high level until I was 55 years old, it took a long time for me to find my voice. Now that I have a platform, I'm determined to use it. And I believe very strongly that in the face of despotism, silence is not a responsible option. I, I think we're all familiar with that slogan, if you see something, say something. Well, when I look around the world today, I see a lot happening that disturbs me deeply. And so I've adapted the slogan, see something, say something, do something. So why am I so worried? Because today, almost everywhere across the globe, democratic institutions and values are under attack. And it seems as if almost every week, there's a new sham election extending the term of an autocrat as president or prime minister. It happened last month in Russia and Egypt. It happened uh, this month in Hungary. And it will happen again next month in Venezuela. Meanwhile, in Europe, extreme nationalist movements are gaining in popularity, entering parliaments, and taking a share of power. And most disturbing of all, here in the United States, we have a president who openly scorns the building blocks of democracy.